welcome to my channel if you're new if you're a returner welcome back and thank you for watching my name is Danielle and I like plants and today I will be talking about my first few plants and I'm deciding to do this video because I'm getting a lot of questions from people about good plants to start with and I could go down the typical list of good plants to start with or I could just tell you what I started with. So for my first plant, I will be picking up something that I always tell new plant owners not to get, which is so hypocritical, but <laughs> I'm just realizing how hypocritical that is today. Um, but it is a succulent, and not just any succulent, but a very popular aloe vera. You can find aloe vera at the grocery store, at the hardware store, it's very common. And I normally tell people not to get succulents as their first plant because they're easy to overwater and typically they need a lot of sun, which makes it hard to grow them in indoor spaces unless you have tons of windows. Um, but I was able to grow my aloe without all of that. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit lopsided. That's because I keep it outside in the summertime and where it's at, I think it's getting more light on one side than the other. So it started leaning towards that side. So all I have to do is rotate it and it'll fix itself. Like two weeks ago, it did not look like this. It just decided to lean over just in time for the video. To be honest, I don't know how I kept it alive because I did not know what I was doing. I got this plant in college. I got it because I went to Home Depot and I saw that there were plants. I really went there for something else and I don't remember what it was, but yeah. Anyway, I potted it up in a container, like an old Yankee Candle container, I think. No hole in the bottom, nothing. I just put some pebbles at the bottom and some regular potting soil in it, not even cactus soil. And I didn't water it much because I am not a overwaterer, I'm an underwaterer. So I would water it once a month with a shot glass as my measuring cup, <laughs> which is so college. And it was looking really good. And then I took it home after college and that's where it just spiraled downward. Um, my cats kept knocking it over. I left it outside when it was freezing once. It looked like a spider afterwards. It, there was just a lot going on with this plant. And I was like, you know what? I've had this plant for years. I need to figure out how to take care of it. Eventually I moved it all over the place, put it in a new pot, putting it in good potting, potting soil. What is this? It's like regular potting soil with a little bit of cactus soil and sand and perlite and some cactus fertilizing beads in here. And yeah, I stuck this thing outside and it started doing a lot better. <laughs> so anyway, that's how I kept this plant alive. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> I just screamed because I looked in the soil and I see a mini. I only water it when I feel it and it's really soft. Like right now it's kind of firm, but if you feel it and it's like soft, then you know you need to water it. Also, sometimes it'll get these divots in it, like in the leaves. That's how you know that it's not getting enough water. But I'll also stick my finger in the pot. If I feel any moisture at all, then it does not need to be watered. In the winter time, I do keep this plant under grow lights because if I don't, the leaves do kind of this thing that they're doing right now. And I think maybe I've had this too close to the house for a few days. Usually the leaves are up. But now the leaves are out, which makes me think it's not getting enough light. Um, because when the leaves start laying out, that means, hey, I'm searching for light. Where's the light? Is it down here? Why would it be down here? I don't know. Really, you want light to be coming from above so that the leaves go up and they're happy. So that is how I kept Miss Aloe Planty alive. I'm so proud of you, people. Plant number two is actually a plant that I got from my brother. This is a Pelia peperomides, and it is a super easy plant to take care of and also super rewarding because it's very cute. Like, look how cute it is. It is adorable. This is also called a UFO plant or a Chinese money plant. I kept this plant alive by the grace of God, to be honest. I didn't know what I was doing, and that's the thing about this plant stuff. It's all trial and error. You see how I started off with really low cost and free plants first? When I first got this plant, I had it in a potting mix that was too draining. I think it had sand and perlite in it, and it did not grow for like six months. I took a spoon, like a plastic spoon, I scooped out the top of the soil, and I put peat moss on at the top of the soil because peat moss holds a lot of moisture. 
and I just put it back in the windowsill and it started doing so much better. You want to give it some bright indirect light. I know that it's ready to water when I stick my finger in and the top inch of the soil is dry. Pelea peperomata is a great starter plant and you might be able to get one for free from one of your plant friends. Like, ask around. So my third plant is another, yes free plants. I did not pay for this plant, um, but it is a great starter plant and it is called the snake plant. So I kept this alive by doing nothing to it. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. It is such a low maintenance plant. It honestly could probably survive without me. <laughs> I've recently moved it to a better window where it can get a little bit more sunlight. So I'll probably get more because I think I've gotten this very slow growth because I've had it far away from a window. It's not getting much light. And so that's another point about this plant. It will actually grow and do okay in low light, but really it prefers bright and direct light, kind of like the Pelia. Um, it doesn't like direct light because that'll burn the leaves. As far as watering goes, I rarely water this plant. And if I remember to water it on a consistent basis, I start to lose pieces of it. So I just don't, I just don't. Like one time I watered it twice in a month and I lost a leaf and I was like. But I've also like not watered it for months on end. So, so yeah, if you are looking for a plant that is really easy and doesn't need a ton of light, this is a good one, a snake plant. You can find these. At the grocery store when i first saw this plant it was sitting downstairs and it was looking really sad and then i put it in one of those setups that i had my aloe in before you know the one with the yankee candle jar and the rocks and the regular potting soil yeah i did that to this plant the aloe and then an orchid and the orchid died but for some reason this guy stayed alive i honestly thought it was an aloe plant it looked so terrible it was just not healthy at all and I took it upon myself to nurse it back to health. After a few months of taking care of it, I realized, yo, this is agave. This is not an aloe plant. And, I mean, I kind of, it, it kind of started to dawn on me in the beginning that it wasn't aloe, but I didn't know what to call it. But no, it's not aloe at all. And if you use the secretions to try and heal your wounds, you are in for a nightmare because you'll just burn yourself even more with agave nectar. Well, not not the kind you eat like that's processed right so don't break this open don't go buy an agave plant and break it open and think you can drink from it you can't so yeah i got this from my mom sitting downstairs looking real sad it survived over a year of torture and rare watering and look it's completely bounced back but yeah i kept this alive by putting it in a terracotta pot and i made a potting mix for this one. I didn't want to use cactus mix because I read that cactus mix has a lot of peat moss in it and agave doesn't necessarily like acidic soil. So I did regular potting mix and perlite and sand and some worm castings. If you're thinking about getting one on your own, I have a few notes for you. It needs a lot of sun. I'm not even gonna play with you. It needs a lot of sun. In the winter, I was able to keep it in the southeast facing window and it survived, but it wasn't very happy there. So this winter, I'll have to put a grow light on it to keep it happy. But in the summer, I keep it outside in direct sun. It is never burned. I mean, that might be a little burn, but I'm not really counting that. It could be something else. As far as watering goes, I rarely water this plant. Actually, in the summertime, when I have my succulents outside, I do not water at all. I let the rain do that work for me. I don't even try to guess because it storms in Georgia and you know, I'd be a little bit nervous that it's gonna get over water, but it never is. And that's because I don't water in between the rain showers, right? So yeah, I keep it outside. But if it's inside, I am very particular about when I water this. I'll stick my finger all the way into the bottom of the pot if I can get there and see if it's completely dry. But yeah, agave doesn't need a lot of care, but it needs a lot of sunlight, okay? And basically, I kept it alive by rarely watering it and giving it a lot of sunlight aka putting it outside for the summer. I think that really helped it. My fifth plant is something a little bit easier. I know you're probably like, can, I, can we have something that doesn't require a ton of sun, please? And here we go. 
This is a mandarin plant and it is a close cousin of the spider plant. A lot of the care for spider plant is going to be the same for this one. With watering, I only use distilled or rainwater because it does not like fluoride. If you give it fluorinated water, which is most tap water in the United States, it'll get these brown splotches all over it. And I've even had whole leaves turn brown and it's so ugly. The leaf cannot recover from it, you just gotta cut it off. So you don't want that, right? Just buy a gallon of distilled water or put a bucket out for rainwater. I have that. I have a five gallon bucket and a one gallon bucket and I set them both out when it rains and they fill up so quickly. And then I just like take a jar and I get what I need and pour it into my plants. It's a lot easier than it sounds. In the winter time, it doesn't really rain much so I just buy a gallon of distilled water every week and make that happen. But yeah, I love this plant. It is a tropical plant, but it is very tolerant of mess for a tropical plant. I will. Hey, so my battery died and I only have one. So when that died, I kind of had to <laughs> take a break. So for this one, you want to use bright and direct light, but it seems to be growing, got like a new leaf and I've just recently repotted it. So it does have a little bit of transplant shock right now. But yeah, that's what I usually do. I typically know that this plant is ready to be watered when its leaves start to fall down. I will stick my finger in the soil to see if it's damp, um, but it's really just to see if it's like super wet or super dry. I don't really have a gauge as far as putting my finger in the pot to see when it needs to be watered. But for the most part, this plant stays pretty healthy even if you forget about it for a few weeks. And that's crazy to me for a tropical plant. Usually most of them are not doing well after a few weeks. One thing I do like about this plant is that it flowers once a year. And so there are some flowers in here. They're not very pretty. But yeah, the flowers are full of seeds. And if you're not careful, they will drop in the pot and grow a bunch of these little plants. So I have about 20 just sitting on my porch and I'm waiting for them to get big enough to go and give to other people because I don't think I want to sell them. Maybe I'll sell them. So yeah. Very, very cute plant, very easy plant, um, very forgiving plant. That's the best part about it, so, yep. Yeah. And last but not least, this is actually one of my favorite plants. This is a Euphorbia mealy, I think, which is also a crown of thorns plant. It is rumored that this is a plant that was used to create Jesus' crown of thorns when he was crucified back in E. Uh, New Testament yeah that's what kind of drew me to this plant I was like look at those thorns I'll try to show you these thorns so these thorns are pretty treacherous looking and pretty dangerous and that's what attracted me because I like a little bit of danger now speaking of danger it is poisonous so if you have any small children or any pets that like to eat plants then this is probably not for you but another thing about it is that if you were to break a leaf or to break a stem, it secretes this milky sap that is also poisonous. So if you get it in your eyes, it can blind you. If you get it on your skin, it burns a little bit. I've gotten it on my skin before and it wasn't pleasant, but it, I just washed it off and I felt better. Uh, but keep that in mind. That's why I saved this one for last because it's probably the least practical out of all the plants that I have. I love this plant so much because it is super easy to take care of and it's very pretty to me. These flowers will come around year round. I like keeping this in the window in the winter time and being able to see these flowers because very few flowers that I have bloom in the winter, winter time. But yeah, so as far as lighting goes, euphorbias can take full sun, but I found that this one is pretty tolerant of medium light as well. Like it'll do pretty well. It probably won't grow as fast but it does well for me and that's what I keep it in in the winter and it still flowers for me so as far as watering goes I look for two things when it comes to watering I stick my finger in the soil see if it's dry number one and then number two these leaves are actually very telling when the plant is dry they droop down okay well that is it those are the first six house plants that I own since I started collecting plants three or so years ago um, my houseplant collection has jumped up since I first got these six, so I'm very excited to continue showing you guys what I have on my YouTube channel. Um, 
if you have anything specific that you want to see from me just let me know below i have philodendrons i have hoyas i have succulents i have a little bit of everything so i'm excited to get sharing with you anyway thank you for watching please subscribe if you enjoyed this video or thumbs it up please 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 thumbs up and i will catch you on the next one bye